What's up guys? After I uploaded a video of myself learning the warm pull up, I noticed that a lot of people were interested in the warm chin up. And a lot of people commented the warm chin up and the warm pull up interchangeably as if they were the same thing. Coincidentally, I received a pair of gymnastic rings from Dynamic. So naturally, I decided to learn the warm chin up and see how different it is from the one arm pull up. You might wonder, since I can do the warm pull up, why didn't I get the warm chin up for free? Look man, the warm chin up could be free only if I have learned the warm pull up through brute force and poor technique. I learned the warm pull up with optimal technique and with just enough strength. The technique of the warm chin up is slightly different and the strength requirement is also slightly different. Therefore, it's not free. If you love watching mainstream calisthenics type of warm chin up tutorial videos which tell you to do this exercise and do that exercise and eventually you will become strong enough to overcome poor technique then this video won't be for you. In this video, I will share the technique and insights I learned throughout my warm chin up journey that no one has ever talked about. On day one, I tried applying the same key technique I learned from the warm pull up which is engaging the lats and going up with a C-shaped detour. However, I realized two new problems. First, my body really want to spin inward during the first half of the movement, and this caused intense pressure on my shoulders. Second, I was not able to start with a complete dead hang due to the pull-up bar not being high enough. So I started with a semi l sit and it felt a lot harder to get out of the dead hang because of this. My first reaction to the spinning problem was to try to solve it by changing the angles of my elbows. But my body still spun around no matter how I positioned my elbows. I thought to myself, maybe I'm just not strong enough. After all, I was able to power through these two new problems if I used the band to reduce load. I trained and trained and trained. 10 days passed and I wasn't making a lot of progress. I knew something had to be wrong. I decided to sit down and think hard. And I figured it out. Due to the unique structure of the ring, as long as the force generated on the left side of the centroid is different from the force generated on the right side of the centroid, there's going to be a torque that causes either the ring or the body to spin. When I perform the one arm pull up on the bar, I have a mixed grip that is somewhere between a pronated grip and a neutral grip. In addition to pulling down, my forearms are also fully engaged by applying counterclockwise torque with the aim of turning my grip into a supinated grip. But obviously my grip still stays the same since the bar doesn't spin. This allows me to generate a lot more force on the way up. However, when I try the same thing on the rings, the torque causes me to spin. And if I disengage my forearm a bit to avoid generating torque when pulling down, the force is far from enough for me to go up. The most natural way to pull down without any torque is actually the three major grips. Pronated grip, neutral grip, and supinated grip. The pronated grip is the best option since it best activates the lats, which we have to mainly rely on to get out of the dead hand. The biggest problem with the pronated grip is that the bicep activation is the worst. Therefore, it makes the second half of the movement a lot more difficult. That's why I do a mixed grip during the warm pull up on the bar to get the best trade off between lat activation and bicep activation. However, since the ring actually spins, I can start with a pronated grip during the first half of the movement for best lat activation, and then spin the ring to a supinated grip during the second half of the movement for best bicep activation. To recap, during the first half of the movement, for the warm pull up on the bar, you rely on good lat activation and good forearm activation. As for the warm chin up on the ring, you rely on very good lat activation. During the second half of the movement, for the warm pull up on the bar, you rely on good bicep activation and good forearm activation. As for the warm chin up, you rely on very good bicep activation. Since I had the first new problem thought through, it was time to tackle the second new problem. Coincidentally, I came across a great video from Simon's Third Strength titled Why the l sit Makes Pull-Ups Harder. A quick summary is that you have to protract your scapula in order to counterbalance the legs that are raised to the front. Whereas in a normal dead hang position, the scapula is neutral. It is a lot more difficult to activate the lats from a protracted scapula. Since I knew why starting with an l sit made things more difficult now, I was able to figure that out instead of starting with a semi l sit I could simply start with my legs folded towards my back instead. 
In this position, I could start with a neutral scapula, maybe even with a slight retraction, which made getting out of a dead hang so much easier. With the two new problems unique to the Warren Ching up on the ring solved, I was able to make significant progress right away. But I wasn't able to do the Warren Ching up successfully right away because my biceps kept running out of gas during the second half of the movement. I trained and trained and trained. My biceps were getting a tiny bit stronger session after session. Finally, on day 28, this happened. Yes! Alright! For the calcinics perfectionists out there, I'm fully aware that my chin barely made it over the ring. I gave it one more try when I was preparing for this video and the result was similar. Could I have trained one more month to make my bicep even stronger so there would be a larger gap between my chin and the ring? Yeah, for sure. But chain over ring without keeping is a valid rap in my book. And I'm sure a lot of people who are pursuing the war on chain up would rather see this video today than one month later. Lastly, so many people reach out to me for help after watching my Warren pull up video. I want to answer a few common recurring questions. First, a lot of people don't seem to understand what engaging the lats means. Leaning back is a necessary condition for engaging the lats, but not the other way around. Here is a cue for you to try. Next time when you do the normal pull-ups, flex and push the muscles that are in the lower back and right on top of the hip bone. My experience is if these muscles are engaged, chances are pretty high that your entire posterior chain will be engaged and thus your lats will be fully engaged. Second, if you can't do at least 70% of extra body weight pull-up, you really shouldn't be thinking about training the warm pull-up. So many people with 30 to 50% extra body weight pull-up wants to jump into training the warm pull-up right away. This is not reasonable. Here is a quick math to show why that is. If your weighted pull-up is 50% of extra body weight, that means the left side of your body pulls 75% of body weight, and so does your right side. That also means when you do the warm pull-up, the other side of the body needs to somehow contribute to pulling 25% of body weight. When you do the warm pull-up, the other side of your lats, core, and chest are engaged. But intuitively, everyone should agree with me that no way those muscles can contribute to 25% of the pulls. So definitely be patient and train your weighted pull up to 70% of extra body weight first before going for the one arm pull up. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check out my website, geekclimber.com. See you in the next video.